Okay, we are back. It has been deconvoluted, I think is the right word. And I'm not even going to attempt to show the difference on video because it just won't come through. But it is a subtle tightening and sharpening of the stars. Now, the next thing I'm going to do before we stretch this. So this has all been done on the linear image, which is the very narrow set of uh, different intensity levels that were captured by the sensor. We're seeing this because it's artificially stretched right now. It's being expanded and high contrasted so that our eyes can pick it up. But uh, in a minute, we'll actually stretch it and get it into the visible range. And then there's a set of functions there. But while it's still non-stretched, I like to do the background extraction, the neutralization, etc. I do the deconvolution and the last thing is noise reduction. So let's just zoom in and take a look. It's pretty noisy. There's particle noise, there's chromatic aberration, these colors. So it could benefit. And there's a few approaches to doing denoising. There is a TGV, there is a uh, multi-linear uh, Oh, what is it? Multi-layer, multi-linear. Anyway, there's a bunch of different ways to tackle it. I like to use a script that is part of the Easy Processing Suite. That's this called Easy Denoise. So first I'm going to go back to the original size. And I'm going to remove any existing masks. And then I go to my script, Easy Denoise. Gives me a big warning. Actually, I can close this deconvolution. I pick the view. And it gives me a little preview over here. So I know I'm on the right image. I just take these default settings. What I'm going to change here is for edge protection, instead of using a noise evaluation script, I've got preview one samples the background. So I can use that preview one for the edge protection. Then there's multi-scale median transform. Thanks for that save. That's what I was trying to say earlier. And you can do different things on the layers. Now these look like really strong settings for people familiar with these tools, but there is a mask that's applied to dampen the effect a little bit. But let me show you how this works. You could just run it, but ideally what we'll do is take these iterations down to a low level so that it doesn't take as much time to run, and then we'll do this evaluation. The evaluation is going to create a copy of the image, run the denoise against it, which is happening right now, and then it's going to bring up an image so we can do a side-by-side -side comparison and see what the noise reduction will look like. So let me let this run, and I'll come back when it's ready to do the comparison. Okay, I'm back, and if you take a look at our dialog, we've now got two tabs for the denoise run. Right now we can flip between the two. Doesn't really seem like much difference. However, let's go ahead and zoom in. Okay, so there's where you can see the graininess and the color. Now let's look at the denoised major difference. So what I like to look at for this, because sometimes people are concerned about going too far with noise reduction, what I'm asking myself is for the detail of the stars and for this ray coming off and this star here, how does that change? And if I look at those and kind of keep the background out of focus, those are pretty well preserved while that color noise is removed. So I like this and actually 200 iterations was a good number. I'm just gonna 
update that to down here. I've got this option. I'll update that to 500 and run with these settings. This will take a lot longer because it's actually doing the real denoise on the full size image. So I will come back when the image is ready to be stretched. Now we've got the denoise process run. We can zoom in and see it's been smoothed out significantly, which is nice. So the next step is to stretch it to be visible. And there's multiple approaches to stretching. I'm going to show you two. One you can do without any special scripts. I open my screen transfer function. That's what's artificially stretching the image right now. So that's what that looks like. And then I'm going to open the histogram transformation, which is right up here. And what I'm going to do is just make a copy of this for this example. So we'll just drag this here. And we check the box to attach the histogram to the active image. And then what we can do is we can take the screen transfer function, drag it onto the histogram, and it'll apply that screen transfer. So if I do a preview and I take off the stretch of the preview, I can see where I'm going. And then we can manipulate some things like this uh, slider here. If we want to amp the contrast, I can move this to the right and see how it darkens the background. Take this a little bit and then press apply. What we get is a stretched image now. It's no longer linear. The other way that we can do it is to run a script. Again, I like this easy processing suite. There's something called soft stretch. And soft stretch uses some masks and applies some nuances that just make for a pretty clean stretch. What you can do is move this slider and control kind of the median background. You can see that's really washed out. And I'm looking for a trade-off between a nice dark background but not losing the detail in the nebula. So I'm going to just slowly tweak this until I don't mind having some background because we can work that out later. So we'll run that. And this is the result we get. So let's go ahead and size this. And then I'm going to grab the other example which will be the clone of the clone. And we'll size that. And we're probably a pretty close match. So this was the manual stretch that I did. And this was the easy stretch. And I think we're pretty close, so I'm just going to go with the easy stretch. I'm going to close out my other masks and then we're going to create a new set of masks and start tweaking that in just a second. Okay I've closed out the old mask that I don't need. I'm going to create some new masks to manipulate this image and the way I'm going to do that is make a copy again. Actually, let's go ahead and just rename this to simplify some of the names of what we're creating. So we'll just make this NGC2174. And then we get a simple clone. And then I'm going to use Starnet again to extract it. Now, the reason why I do this again and don't use the previous mask is because there's been processing. So it's changed the dynamic of what the image looks like. The Starnet that I use, make sure you have checked generate a star mask. 
because what we're going to do is we're going to use a combination of the nebula, the star mask, and something I call a magic mask to tweak the background and the properties and just get this to a final state. So right now it's extracting the stars from that image, that clone image that I created. We'll let that finish processing here in just a second. And here we have our stars. Here we have our nebula. Now I'm going to do a little bit of processing. What just happened? Oh, I accidentally did an undo. So I'm going to manipulate my star mask. I have this grow, which is a morphological transformation. Set the dilation. So that's just going to make the stars slightly bigger. And then I'm going to blur them by using convolution. This is exactly what happened with the mask that we used for deconvolution. And now with my star mask in place, I'm going to go to this clone and I'm just going to call this no stars. I'm going to use my curves. to emphasize the nebulosity. And how do I do that? Well, in the real-time preview, if I click on the background, you'll notice I get signal over here. Let's go to our luminance channel. That's what I'm going to manipulate. So you can see when I click on background, it sort of pops in the middle right here. So I'm going to put a point probably right here. And then I'm going to just slowly drag this down. What you can see is the intensity of the nebula is increasing and the background is decreasing. So I'm increasing the coverage of this mask for the nebula. So we'll go ahead and apply that. I'm not going to do a second time because that contrast is probably too much. And then I'm going to recombine this with the star mask to create what I call the magic mask. So if we open up, this is pixel math. And all it does is it takes the maximum of the target that we drop it on and the star mask. And it's also set up to create a new image called magic. So let's apply that. And now we have our magic mask, which looks kind of like the original image, but it's been obviously processed for us. So what can we do with these new masks? The first thing I want to do is increase sort of the brightness and saturation of the main nebula. So I'm going to select my no stars mask. Right now it's got the nebula highlighted. You can invert it to confirm what is actually being covered. And then we'll go into our curves. And I'm going to increase the luminosity a little bit. Just make that nebula brighter. Then I'm going to go into saturation. I'm going to increase saturation. Make those colors deeper and richer. And probably not do much more tweak than that for this first pass. Now the other thing we can do while we've got this main nebula highlighted is actually notice how you can see kind of these streaks coming across this banding. There's a script that I can run that may take care of that. It's called Canon banding reduction. Even though it means Canon banding artifacts, it'll work regardless of how your image was sourced. And we'll run that. So that's cleaned that up a little bit. The other thing we can do is we can look at how do we draw detail out on the nebula. And there's a couple ways to do that.
The first way is called local histogram equalization. So I'm going to mask again because I only want this to work or to apply against my nebula. And then I'm going to go into local histogram equalization right here. I'm just going to pop open the preview. So right now you can see it looks pretty coarse and, and ugly. It's not going to be a good application. Let's increase the kernel radius, see if that makes a difference. And up here we can just use this button to toggle before, after, before, after. You can see the after is definitely not what we're looking for. Um, let me try a combination of settings. Just decrease the amount a little bit. And I really don't like how this is going, so we're going to not use the local histogram approach. Another approach is the HDR. So this is going to be the HDR multi-scale transform. I'm going to show you a few ways this operates. So this is just six iterations with no special settings checked. And it'll take a moment. It actually runs faster than I expected on this larger image. But we'll go ahead and commit it. Normally you would do a preview window and kind of do a section, but I like to see the whole kit and caboodle. And so we've run it. I can undo, redo. So you can see it really didn't do much. It kind of tightened up the details a little bit. It actually dimmed it somewhat. So let's undo that. Let's increase the iterations to nine, or the number of layers, I should say, that it looks at. Try that, see if that makes a difference. And this is a lot of how this goes, is experimentation and seeing tweaks. The goal is to bring out the detail of the nebulosity as much as possible without introducing artificial artifacts or doing anything um, you know that involves drawing or artificially altering it. We're trying to use the tools to apply the changes. This is run now. Let's undo, redo, undo, redo. Really not seeing much of a difference there either. So I'm going to call the nebula good. We just want to clean up the background and then we're going to be pretty close to uh, finishing this image. So the next step is to take the magic mask, make sure the background, the foreground is what's protected, red is what's protected, and we're just going to do what's hopefully a subtle tweak to the luminosity to bring the background out. We're going to use the same technique. We're going to kind of find where the background is. And this time I'm going to put two dots because I'm not necessarily wanting to increase the intensity outside of this. If I just did one dot, it would turn into an S curve. So this sort of locks the change down to this lower end. And we'll just draw out the background just like that. So I'll apply this. And then we can debate whether or not we want to apply it a second time. I actually, there's still some noise here, but the goal is not to eliminate noise. It's just to reduce the noise. So I'm not quite sure. Maybe if we do a softer stretch, we could do one more. But we also don't want to destroy the detail of the nebula, which you can see the edges would already be sort of compromised here. So let's bring this up just slightly. And is there even a change? 
yeah, I'm going to leave it here. And then I'm going to choose my star mask. Make sure it's protecting the background, highlighting the stars. Now I've got this sharpen. So this is a multi-scale linear transform, but instead of using it for noise reduction, I've added offsets to the bias <clears throat> on these layers. So what that's going to do is we'll apply that. And that's going to sharpen the stars. So I'm not sure if you noticed that, but the stars are a lot more detailed and bright. So I know this looks a little rough, but I think if we give this a pass, a final pass of some noise reduction, we'll be pretty much where we're at. So what I'm going to do is remove the mask. I'm going to go ahead and save this. We'll call it... Looks like I already had a process section, so we'll call this process 2. So I save it as XISF because that's the highest resolution. Highest fidelity has the most information. But then I'm also going to save it as a TIFF. So that I can bring it into my denoise function. And I'll show you that next. I actually just took a look at this on another monitor, and the background is pretty noisy, um, especially with uh, some colors. So I'm going to try to stretch it a little bit more. We're going to put back on our magic mask. Protect everything but the background. And actually, what I might do is I might actually go to my magic mask, make a copy of it, uh, I don't even need a copy. I'm going to show you another type of mask to create. This is called range selection. because I'm trying to get a little bit of a sharper cutoff. So with range selection, <clears throat> we can preview, and you basically specify the limits for the cutoff of the mask. So what I'm trying to do here is get the stars and nebula, but move the background out of the equation. So I think that's pretty close. We can tweak it a little bit. And then we're going to add some smoothness so it's not as sharp. Let's go ahead and try that mask. So this is what it generated. Now I'm going to pick that mask. Protect the foreground, and we're going to go back into curves, and this time I'm just going to do a full stretch of luminosity, bring it down. And that appears pretty good to me. I'm going to go ahead and apply that. It looks like we could go one more iteration. Let me just make sure we won't lose too much nebula for that. I think that'll be good too. So I'm going to drop one more. All right. <clears throat> now I think it's ready to go ahead and save. We're going to resave the TIFF and do some noise reduction. 
So save it as, go to TIFF file, gonna overwrite what we did. And next up is uh, noise reduction on the nonlinear stretched one.